anyone who's familiar with on-chain governments of Polkadot, it's the same exact concept except for all organizations which are launched on the Invarch network. And then we have dynamic members and roles permissions for multi-sig. So this is a really cool thing I'll dive into a bit more in a bit, but basically, just like in an organization, you have many different types of uh, employees who have different roles who are responsible for different tasks. You're able to have them all be members of the same multi-sig and then have it to where, let's say, only certain members can vote on certain proposals or everybody can vote, but certain members have uh, a higher weighted vote than others or just free for all. Everybody has the same amount of voting weight on whatever it is that they're voting for. And then most importantly, or one of the more important things is using XCM, we also have bridgeless multi-chain asset management. It's a bit of a mouthful, I know. Uh, but this is what we utilize with Saturn uh, in order to allow any organization with a multi-sig to manage their funds across any network from just one account without actually needing to bridge those funds away from those chains. So up behind me is a little bit of an overview of the Invarch network. There's uh, several different components in which we focus on. So one of them is, as I mentioned, multi-chain accounts. So utilizing our Saturn multi-sig protocol, it's the ability for a single multi-sig account, which can then be the base layer for any organization or any DAO, to be the only account that's then needed to operate and you know, navigate, manage assets, use those assets, use dApps across all of Web3, you know, all across the, the new internet. We also have multi-party computation, which we're going to be throwing into the mix. We're going to have a TSS or threshold signature scheme protocol. And this is us kind of taking advantage of the unique opportunities of building on Polkadot. Uh, building on Polkadot, we don't have to worry about the security bits. Instead, we have our collators and we're able to use our nodes in order to realize the CSS protocol with multi-party computation. Then we have off-chain signing. And then with off-chain signing, you can have a multi-sig or a DAO that's deployed on the Invarch network, secured by Polkadot, which is able to then generate and fully control a native account on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge, Solana, some chain someone just made five minutes ago. It doesn't matter. Uh, we also have, as I mentioned, DAO staking. We have NFT 2.0 technology. Uh, anyone who's familiar with uh, Remark, very, very similar. There's like Unique's Palette V2. And this is composable NFTs, which can be used for a myriad of different use cases. One of them being, which we're particularly interested in, is on-chain reputation systems. Um, we're also looking and looking to explore IP assets on-chain. So the ability using NFTs for content creators, whether it's an artist, a musician, or even you know, inventors, architects, to store their IP on-chain, license the, the IP on-chain, and then facilitate tokenized licensing right over the Invarch network. And then, of course, there is DAO governance. This is very important. This is a layer that individuals or organizations are able to apply over their multi-sigs in order to determine, essentially, the business logic for their DAOs. And then last but not least, one of the things that we're going to be doing kind of near the end of our development roadmap, or at least our immediate one, is having smart contracts on the Invarch network. And the reason for having smart contracts is that individuals can kind of launch uh, customize business logic for their DAOs or for their multi-sigs and just, yeah, allowing themselves to uh, continuously add to the network in that fashion beyond just, you know, um, runtime upgrades. But the really big thing I'm excited to talk to everybody about is the Saturn multi-chain multi-sig. Damn, I'm sweating a lot, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, the Saturn multi-chain multi-sig, it's a uh, I don't know, it's kind of a big deal, I think, a little biased. So multi-sigs today, the issue is they're very fractured. Um, so for one, let's say we're talking about Gnosis Safe. They're kind of like the, the big dog in the game right now. They have over 50 or close to 50 markets are pumping a little bit, so I think $50 billion of assets under management. Um, but they're also reliant on blockchains that have an EVM. No EVM, no Gnosis smart contract, um, which is obviously that's a barrier of adoption. Even if they do, even if you're just looking at Ethereum, you know, Ethereum and its L2s, Ethereum, Arbitrum, Optimism, ZK Sync when that comes out, they all have support. You can have Gnosis safe contracts on those chains, and let's say you deploy them on each one of those chains to manage your assets, they're all fractured and separated. So there is no way currently to realize the ability for you to just have to manage one multi-sig if you want to navigate or utilize, you know, manage your assets on multiple networks. Um, 
kind of annoying, you know, especially if you're an organization and you have different members, different roles of your multi-sig. If you want to go and make a change on one network, you have to go and make a change and submit a proposal and pay for that too, all the transaction fees on every single one of those networks. So whether it's three chains or like 50 chains in the Polkadot ecosystem, that's kind of a pain in the rear, <laughs> which is one of the things that we look to solve. Um, and also when you look at things such as like Fireblocks or Copper, they are very limited. They provide a custodial multi-chain asset management solution. However, it's at the rate at which they're, they're able to support other chains, if they even decide to. Uh, someone from Arbitrum or close to Arbitrum just yesterday told me that they quoted Arbitrum uh, $1 billion to provide support, whereas <laughs> we can give that to you for free, Dan. <laughs> So really big difference uh, in that experience. It's, it's not ideal at all. It, it's burdensome. With Saturn, it completely changes the game. So like I said, Saturn is it's one multi-sig, any blockchain. It's able to service any blockchain regardless of whether it has a virtual machine. Regardless of like in the Polkadot ecosystem, it has the pallet proxy, uh, pallet multi-sig and pallet proxies. If the chains don't have those, then they're not able to get multi-sig support from current solutions that we're seeing. Um, while they are great, again, they're limited by the back-end technology, which is the existence or lack thereof of these pallets. Um, and then again, one deployment is all you need. If you want to go ahead and say you're a big organization or a big community or you're Chaos DAO and you are participating in governance across multiple networks and you have members who are responsible for you know, voting on these matters, if you want to make a change, like I said, it's a pain in the rear. But with Saturn, you just need to make one change. One change and you're good to go. And in that sense, it's also very cost effective. Even differently though, from this one multi-sig, like I said with those, those members, let's say you have members of Chaos DAO or any other organization that are participating in on-chain governance, um, or even it's just in a company and you're making decisions. You can separate roles so that only certain members can have, let's say, a, a voting, uh, a vote, a voice, when it comes to matters over certain networks. You know, let's say you identify people who are rather enthusiastic and knowledgeable about certain networks, then you can allow them to be experts within that domain and allow them to have more influence and more voice versus just kind of a hodgepodge of everyone. Or not, you can, you know, do whatever you want. That's the, the beauty of Saturn is it's very flexible. If you want to make changes later on, you can do that. If you want to add or remove members, you can do that. Um, as far as like also like, so let's say like social recovery, you don't have to worry about a seed phrase either. That's the really beautiful thing. If you're an individual, um, you can have, let's say you know, an individual, just for you, you like the security, you can have three accounts on there. You don't lose, you never lose the Saturn multi-sig uh, seed phrase. There is no seed phrase. You simply, by having the accounts that are connected to it, you'll always be able to access the multi-sig. Uh, if you lose access to one of your accounts, then all you have to do is have a proposal where you vote to remove the one account and then you add another one and you're good to go. Very, very simple, very seamless, very dynamic and something that a true organization would need if they're gonna be feasibly operating on chain. So behind me, you can kind of see a little bit uh, about Saturn. Um, what I really like again is, as I've mentioned, I'll sound like, a, like I'm beating a dead horse here, but it's one multi-sig, multi any blockchain. Um, it's just gonna make everyone's life a lot easier. Whether you are a VC in the space, and you know we have like 40 plus chains on Polkadot alone, even more when you consider Kusama, um, you're able to have just one multi-sig to manage all of your assets. One multi-sig to then use your assets and navigate and use dApps across the ecosystem. If you, let's say you have a multi-sig that uh, manages native dot on the relay, but you want to send it over to Hydra DX and you want to perform a swap there to get assets so that you can send to another chain to go stake those assets, you can do that all through one multi-sig. And using Saturn and Saturn Gateway, which is a UI that we're building, we're also producing an XCM transaction builder and bundler, which is going to allow you to essentially build out a transaction flow across multiple different blockchains, bundle them together into essentially one proposal for the multi-sig, and then execute that. And if you like, if it's something that you believe that you'll reuse, you can save these, uh, these bundled transactions as widgets within your multi-sig for easy redeployment in the future. Again, just making the, the lives of the users just that much easier. And again, especially if you are a business or a power user, so to speak. 
the big thing, though, is, you know, here we are at Polkadot Decoded. This truly is something that we couldn't have realized anywhere else. Like, this is, you know, only on Polkadot. It's a very great hashtag. I'm a fan. But this is, it's more than that. It's a fact. You know, without Polkadot, without the ability of leveraging XCM, without the shared security being provided to us, this isn't something that we would be able to realize, at least nowhere near as easily. It'd probably be a real headache. And again, I don't really think that we'd be able to do it not the way that we are. We certainly wouldn't be able to do all of this and then also provide gasless transactions for users so that an organization, those members aren't paying fees for every single decision that they're voting on. Um, it's kind of a big deal to us. Without Polkadot, we wouldn't be able to realize any of this. Um, so again, from the security that's being provided, we don't have to whip up a validator set. We have collators. Our nodes can be used for a TSS multi-party ownership protocol. Then we can have off-chain signing and really change the game here when it comes to multi-sig accounts. And not just providing this ultimate solution for Polkadot, but providing this ultimate solution for every blockchain. I don't care. You could think that Polkadot is irrelevant. That's fine. But you could be a power user who loves Ethereum and loves all of its L2s. And guess what? You can't have one multi-sig to manage all of your assets, but you can use this. You can use this multi-sig, which is secured by Polkadot, to manage all of your assets over on Ethereum and then some, and just make your life easier. You can also have, again, gasless transactions. Very, very nice for just community members, for individuals, for organizations. In my opinion, it's kind of a need. Um, and all of this, again, just comes back to Polkadot. And with XCM, we're able to provide this in a way for the ecosystem where the beautiful thing is it's like we're providing the service. I like to call ourselves a service parachain because we add a kind of like a, a universal layer, this multi-party ownership layer across the entire stack to where every single blockchain in the ecosystem, every parachain, whether you're, you're Moonbeam or Hydra or Astar or Interlay or whoever, Fallow Network, it does not matter. Out of the, or a new chain, even better, an up and coming new chain that's looking to jump into the ecosystem, you can kind of take Saturn, you can take this multi chain multi sig as a de facto out of the box benefit of building in the ecosystem. It's not just something that you don't need to worry about, it's the best damn solution there is, and it's given to you for free. You know, extremely powerful. Um, we don't charge you a billion dollars for infrastructure, sounds nice, but, um, you know, I'm not that guy. So, with uh, with Invarch also, you know, soon to be joining Polkadot and launching on Polkadot as a parachain, then we're really able to have some fun. See, parachains to me, yes, some of them are general purpose. Some of them provide more of like a utility across networks or like a service parachain. But I like to look at them all as like Lego pieces. You know, so many of them specialize in a, in a certain service. And by connecting all these different parachains and protocols across parachains using XCM, that's when you're able to have these multi-protocol powered applications, which I think are really going to be the narrative drivers of success for the Polkadot ecosystem. These are things that we can't simply, these are things that you can't just duplicate somewhere else. I can't, there's been so many times, especially over the past year, two years, where world-changing innovation has been initially developed in this ecosystem, and then someone else makes a standard or it pops up on Ethereum, and now it's a big deal. You know, this is something using XCM where you can't replicate that because it doesn't exist in those environments. So, like for example, I have something up here. I try not to look at the screen too much, but a lot of text. So, using Invarch, let's say using SAT and those multi-sig, this is where it gets fun. So, you can have Kilt, let's say, providing um, DID or verified identity credentials for multi-sig members. This is extremely important for businesses and compliance. You can also look towards the future of having a multi-sig, verified multi-sig members who are members of a business and have those credentials verified coming together to sign off to create a multi-sig, which then has its credentials verified and KY, KYB process through Kilt. And now, all in one scope, all in one creation process, you have a compliance, um, KYB verified business or multi-sig account, which has been launched on Invarch. Using uh, an, a, a DAO or a multi-sig on Invarch, this multi-sig or this DAO can then go and access the entire, all the whole sea of applications and dApps which are being built on, so let's say, Moonbeam, for example, and explore all those. Uh, just like you as a regular user, you'll go to those apps and you'll click that you want to do a swap, you want to lend, uh, you want to buy an NFT. When you go to do that as a regular user, it's the same exact experience except with Saturn, then that call is going to be automatically generated into a proposal which will be conveniently there for members to go ahead and vote on. And once approved, it'll execute on that network. Very nice, very easy. 
uh, with things such as Fallon Network, I'm a big fan. So Fallon Network has um, their fat contracts, which allow for off-chain computation. So you can have a multi-sig that owns a fat contract, which spins up a bot that owns a Discord, you know, creates a, creates a Discord server, and now you have a Discord server which is essentially owned and, and managed by a multi-sig, essentially decentralizing ownership over the server itself for a community and for a DAO, because for some reason, that's, that's where most of DAOs kind of communicate nowadays. And we have D Discord's de facto, and OKS DAO, that's kind of the, our favorite hangout. Um, and then also, when you have things such as like Composable, you know, we already have with Tinkernet on Kusama, we have a connection with Picasso, which is also their Kusama equivalent. Now we're also able to access uh, assets in the Cosmos ecosystem um, right off the bat, even without RTSS protocol, um, thanks to using IBC through their network. And again, this is just one of the very unique and powerful things of Polkadot is as each one of these chains build and they provide these powerful uh, tools and these protocols, the number of things that we're able to achieve, the number of services that we're able to realize, they just grow exponentially. And this is just from, in my opinion, properly leveraging XCM and focusing on these you know, multi-protocol or cross-chain powered use cases. Yeah. So with all that, just uh, want to tee things off by just remembering everyone that the future is DAO. Um, Polkadot is just a massive DAO. Um, Invarch is looking to become a home for DAOs. I firmly believe that DAOs can be integrated into nearly every aspect of uh, business, whether it's a business that is entirely run on chain as a DAO, or it's just simply aspects of DAOs, which are then integrated into certain levels of a business's organizational structure in order to allow for more efficient, more dynamic, or otherwise more inclusive decision-making processes, which can, let's say, help them make uh, more ideal customer-facing products, for example. Um, I do believe that with the right tooling, that DAOs can become one of the most, if not the most, efficient forms of business. We just need that proper tooling. And this proper tooling is not something that I believe can be easily developed elsewhere because of how fractured those experiences are. You can't have a business, let's say, like take the United States, 50 states, you're not going to have a business where if you want to do business across the country, you need to have a building registered in every single state. That's ridiculous. The same thing shouldn't be that way for DAOs. If you want to have a DAO, you want to have a digital organization, then you should be able to set up shop once, have one account. You want to go ahead and have a legal wrapping around your DAO, you should need to do that one time and then be good to go, be able to operate across all of Web3, no different from you and me. So I hope you liked my talk. Like I said, hot and sweaty, a little nervous, but it's because I'm excited. I appreciate everyone who came out, and I hope that I was able to, you know, kind of uh, inspire some people, get a little, you know, some excitement going for the future of DAOs, and more importantly, just really stress the significance of why this is uh, such a unique benefit of building on Polkadot, and, yeah, why we're going to kick ass with it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.